This time on Auto Anatomy, the flooded Corvair is back and it's better than ever. Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Anatomy. My name is Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Now, today is a day that I've been looking forward to for a long time because we're getting the car back on the road. We took this car off the road probably three months ago. And at that time, I had only planned to take it down for about a month just to do the trunk floor. But as you can see over the last few videos, things kind of snowballed a little bit. We ended up doing, you know, not only the trunk floor, the entire nose, the corners on the front side and the back side of both fenders, both wheel arches, undercoating everything, new brake lines, all kinds of stuff. Today, we are going to get the suspension rebuilt and get the car back on the road. We are gonna do some upgrades on the suspension while we're in here. Nothing crazy, just some modest improvements. Um, I'm gonna be replacing all of the bushings, all of the ball joints, um, putting new shocks on it, all of that kind of stuff. But we're also gonna set the foundation for maybe some future improvements. I know that drum brakes are a great uh, option on this car. At some point, we may wanna do disc brakes. I don't know, let me know what you think below. Let's start by getting this thing cleaned up, get it apart, and then we can really figure out how extensive we wanna go on modifications on this thing. Before we get started, take just a minute and hit that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. It's a free way to help support our channel. Also, leave me a comment below on things that you'd like to see upcoming for future videos about the flooded Corvair. Let's get this guy cleaned up. I've got a new tool that I wanna try out and let's see how well it works. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and start sandblasting clean the uh, front suspension. You know me, I like having things clean before I start putting them back together. Um, it's just a, a bad habit or a good habit or whatever. So I don't have the ability to, to truly like take this thing completely apart, sandblast it, powder coat it, do whatever, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So I picked this up which is a, uh, a little nozzle that you hook up to your pressure washer. And supposedly you can put this end into a bag of, uh, of like sand or this is coal slag and do like a dustless blasting on this thing. So I've got the front suspension up on the stand. Let's fire up the pressure washer and see how it does. All right, well, I think it did a pretty decent job. Um, it may not be dustless, but it sure isn't messless. Um, I'm soaking wet and covered in sand now, and uh, my driveway is now full of like wet sand. So I've got a little cleanup to do, and then um, we can get this thing back in and start taking it apart some more. I have never taken apart a Corvair suspension, so this is all new to me. Um, what it looks like is that the easiest thing to do is gonna be start with just unbolting the shock. The spring's not gonna go anywhere, and then I can put a spring compressor in maybe from the bottom and pull the spring down tight against the lower control arm. Once that tension is off of the, the bucket up here, then maybe I could take off the lower and then take off the upper and take this whole thing off as one big one big unit. Unfortunately, the shock is so worn out that I can't even spin it off with an impact.
So I'm sure there is a an official Corvair spring compressor tool, but you know, I don't have it. So it's gonna make do. And this is one for like a V8 Mustang style, or I guess any early Mustang. It's an internal spring compressor. And it just goes up inside the coil here and grabs the, the spring from the inside. All right, let's see if we can make that work. Well, pulled a lot of pressure off of it. I guess there's one way to find out. Let's pop the, uh, the bolts off. Okay, so no pressure on that. Good. Now, I'm not real sure. Let's see if we can try it this way instead. Almost. Now this is not the preferred way. But it works. Okay, so that part's loose. Just gotta knock this out, and I bet you it's just rusted solid up in here. The front cross member is all stripped down bare, and the uh, the sandblaster did an okay job. Um, I'm not going to say it was great. I've still got a lot of work to do um, on cleaning up, and especially when you start looking at all of the pieces that we have here. So some things, you know, like the tops of the control arms, it did an okay job on. Some things, yeah, it it really needs some some more cleaning. So I've got a ridiculous amount of work to do to get this cleaned up where I can even think about starting to put anything back together. Um, gosh, I don't even know where to start. Um, I guess probably the first thing is gonna be getting this part cleaned up since it's the biggest piece and what everything attaches to. Let me um, take a little time, do some, some wire brushing and whatnot. And I'm thinking about just going ahead and looking at all these welds and going over them and maybe even doing some reinforcement welding while I'm in here. I mean, things like this little brace here, it's just held on right here at the bottom. Is that gonna break? Probably no, but if I've got the opportunity to go ahead and put a, a bead down through here and reinforce some of these things, I might as well take the opportunity and do it. Got the uh, cross member on the bench here and have been just doing some grinding and cleaning up here. Um, I can't believe how much slag and like welding junk is on this, uh, this cross member. Definitely looks like they didn't take a lot of time in cleaning things up or having any precautions about uh, their welding. Anyway, um, I think what I'd like to do is areas like this at the top of the shock mount. I, I think I wanna just like run a bead all the way up 
across and then down on the other side just to provide a little additional strength for this partly because this is where the spring comes in the shock comes in there's a lot of stress right in this one area so if i can make this just a little bit stronger and then i'm contemplating let's see if i can move this one-handed there we go it's spot welded down here in a few spots and i don't think i want to completely weld this all up um, because this has to have a way to drain. I mean, there's a drain hole down through here. I'm wondering how much water comes out through here versus through these sides. I bet you the water just comes out through this, the bottom down here because this is also open up into here. I may also just run a bead all the way down this whole thing on both sides. I don't know that it's gonna help anything at all, but uh, it'll make me feel like it's doing something better. So let me get this cleaned up a little bit and start on some welding. Well, I don't know if that made it any stronger or not, but I went ahead and welded up pretty much every seam that I thought um, wasn't already welded and went ahead and ran a bead all the way down front and back and then the tops of both of the, uh, the shock towers and then just, you know, little places all the way around it. Got it ground down. I think it's pretty much close to being ready to, to clean up. Um, let's get this thing outside, blow some more of the, uh, the dust and sanding grit out of it. And then I can show you what we're gonna use for the, uh, the suspension paint. As you all know, I'm a fan of Pour 15 products and I'm not sponsored by them. I just, I find that their products work really well. So for the suspension bits, I picked up this Pour 15 top coat. And this is kind of a satin black version of what we've been using. And it says that you can put this stuff direct to metal without a need for a primer or undercoat. So I'm just gonna go out and clean the, uh, the cross member off and then we can pour this in the spray gun and see what it looks like. I ended up switching to a bigger gun just because the, uh, I think that stuff was pretty thick and I didn't really care for the pattern. Also thinned it out about three or four to one with some lacquer thinner and it has laid down really nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna let this dry for maybe an hour or so, flip it over and then paint the other side. So here's just a little tip. If you don't use all of your pour 15, if you get this stuff into the, the ridges, it's game over. If you put the lid back on, if you take a piece of cling wrap, just plastic wrap, and then put that over before sealing it, you'll be able to get the, uh, the can lid back off again. So just something to take with you. Now that we've got the cross member all cleaned up and painted, it's time to start working on the other parts of the front suspension. I need to get the upper and lower control arms all cleaned up, press out the old ball joints and bushings, and we're gonna get them ready for some modifications that we're gonna do before putting everything back together. So one way that I use to uh, get these old kind of rubber bushings out 
is taking a drill bit and then drilling it in, you know, several times around the uh, the rubber. And then you can start taking the drill bit and just very carefully walking it around. And you can actually just walk this whole rubber bushing right out of the uh, the shell. And then we can just press the uh, the old shell out. Well, it's time to replace the uh, the ball joints, and I actually found from a buddy of mine some original, new old stock, like 1960s um, era Moog ball joints. These are really cool in the original box. Um, they are a little bit different in that the original ones were press in, and these are screw in. Now, it's kind of a big deal to put these in. Um, let me open up the box here and show you what's in the box. So the original installation instructions are still here and it talks about if you've got regular press-ins then you have to take this and screw these in um, using an inch and five-eighths box or open-end wrench. Now this thing is supposedly self-tapping so when you look at the original ball joint uh, hole, that's like, I don't know, not quite 3 16 but that's probably 10 gauge metal. That's gonna be really hard to cut with a box end wrench. Um, I may have to go and find an inch and 5 8 socket because I don't know that I can do that with a, uh, a crescent wrench or an open end wrench, but we'll give it a shot. All right, let me get a little cutting oil here. Okay, yep, that's, that's going to be hard to do. All right, let me make sure I get this thing straight before we start cramming down on it because, oh, if this thing gets twisted, not only is the new ball joint ruined, so is the control arm. All right, let me see how much further I have to go on this. All right, almost there. Only maybe a couple of more turns. I've got to say, if in the 60s they were expecting people to do this with just like an open end wrench, they're a better man than I. Okay, I've got this all screwed down now. Um, now I get to take it all apart again and finish cleaning this thing up. Okay, got the uh, control arm a little cleaned up and you know, I can't leave good enough alone. So again, while I'm in here, I might as well make a, a few changes. And one thing that uh, I don't know if it's a Corvair thing or not, but I've seen done on a lot of other cars with stamped control arms is welding some reinforcement plates in place just to prevent those control arms from flexing. So what I did here was created a, a little template out of a uh, LaCroix box and we're gonna cut this out of some 10 gauge and weld it on to the, the inside of the, um, the control arm. And that still allows me room to put the shock in and you know access everything that I need to, but it'll provide a little bit of strength to the, uh, the outside of the arm. Unfortunately, I can't box this thing in completely because you still have to get access to, you know, the shock has to come in and then, you know, the, uh, the strut rods or whatever they're called, ball joint, all that stuff. 
but I can just make it a little bit stronger than it was. So let me take some metal and trace this uh, template on, get it cut out, and we'll get it welded in place. Got my little brace cut out here and had to put just a tiny little bend in it because the, uh, the control arm kind of kicks back right here. So this is gonna sit something about like that. And I'll just clean this up and then get it welded in place. And then we will have, in theory, a much stronger lower control arm. Well, I'm not the best TIG welder, but I got it all glued in. Now I just have to let this cool off. We'll do some grinding, get it all smooth. And then I think this guy is ready to uh, just do some final cleanup and paint. One of the next modifications that I want to do on the, uh, the Corvair is upgrade the steering. Now I'm going to be replacing all of the tie rod ends and stuff like that. So, but I did see that there is a common modification that's done, which is replacing the Pitman arm bushing um, where it attaches into one of the, the drag links with a nylon unit. So I picked this one up from Clark's and it's a kit that has a new metal sleeve, uh, the nylon bushing and a bolt itself and we're gonna press out the original one here. Um, I'm gonna use my OTC ball joint press, which I absolutely love this thing. If you're in the market for something like this, I highly recommend it. So I'll drop a link in the, uh, the description where I got it. But we should just be able to press this one out and looking at the instructions, it just says, press it out, put in the metal sleeve, then the bushing, then the bolt. So it looks pretty straightforward to me. All right, old one's out. And you can see how worn out that one was. I mean, it was barely hanging on by a thread. All right, this is all done. Hopefully this still fits and take up a whole bunch of slop out of our steering. In the same vein of going ahead and making improvements, you know, while we're in there, um, I read somewhere about making an improvement to the drag link that hooks up to the, the Pittman arm. And basically the comment was, you know, these drag links were designed for like 13 inch bias ply skinny tires. And with modern tires that are a little bit wider, people are pushing the cars a little bit harder, that they could actually flex um, and deflect under hard loads. So it recommended taking a piece of angle iron and welding it on just to provide a structural brace. So I picked up a piece of three quarter inch angle iron and we're just gonna cut this so where that it sits kind of in between these two bolt holes for the tie rod ends. And then this will weld on about there and provide a little bit of additional structural integrity to keep this piece from flexing under hard loads. So let me measure this, cut it off, grind some of this paint off and we'll get this burned in and this part will be done. Looks like right at 16 inches. Okay, so we've got the tie rod or the drag link all cleaned up. And I think this is gonna go something about like that. So let me just clamp this down here. And we're going to hold this tight up against the drag link while welding it because what I don't want it to do is bow or bend or pull this drag link out from being straight. It would kind of defeat the whole point. But looking at it, I think that's going to work pretty well. All right, let me get the uh, welder out and we'll get this thing burned in.
Well, I keep blowing the circuit breaker, so I guess I'm going to have to upgrade and, you know, build a new garage or something. Got the brace all welded in here and not the, the best welder, but it looks solid. And I think that's going to provide a ton of structural integrity to the, uh, the steering drag link here. So I'm going to let that cool off a little bit, then we'll get some paint on it and mark that off the to-do list. This is one of my absolute favorite parts of a build, the going back together phase. We've got everything all nice and cleaned up and it's time to start putting the suspension and brakes back together on the car. I'm gonna start with some of the other upgrades that we've done on the, on the flooded Corvair here. I went ahead and reached out to Clark's and picked up a set of uh, quick ratio or quick steering arms. So those are also gonna go on, plus we're gonna go back through and put all the brakes back together. Now I have painted everything with the, uh, the Pore 15 chassis black, so it'll be nice and protected, clean, and this stuff is rock solid once it's hard. So let's start putting everything back together. Well, let's start by getting the spindle bolted onto the backing plate. Hang on a minute. I forgot to clean something. I'll be right back. Okay, that's better. That would bother me. Okay, and next we're gonna do the new quick ratio steering arms from Clark's. And I've got some new grade eight hardware that I just threw on the floor. So it's time to throw the shoes back on and I'm gonna reuse the shoes that I had on it. They were new, so no reason to, to change them out. Now we've got a long shoe and a short shoe. So the long shoe, sorry, this is the long shoe. This is the secondary shoe. The short shoe is the primary shoe and the short shoe will always face forward. So on this one, this is forward. So we're going to plop those in just like that. Then we can put the retaining springs in and pins and start putting all the, uh, the ancillary hardware in place. Next, we're going to put in our little drive pins that go into the shoes themselves and anchor into the wheel cylinder. Now it's time to start putting in all the springs, and these can get kind of intimidating um, looking at the way this is all laid out, but it's actually a fairly simple process. So take, make sure that you've got a good workshop manual or only do one at a time so that we've got another one to refer to. We'll start with this little plate that anchors down and keeps the shoes from rocking. Then this spring wire or this heavy wire will anchor onto this pivot and then go up and over the, the main pivot at the top. We've got a longer spring and a shorter spring. The longer spring will go onto the leading edge here and will anchor around this pin. The shorter spring We'll go into this shoe and anchor onto the little wire hook here and then this spring goes right back into here pushing this away from the shoe and we have one final spring that will go down here onto the uh the bottom of the shoe but we're going to hold off on putting that one in yet
Okay, springs are on. The last thing to do is to put the self-adjusters in place, self-adjuster in place, and I just have to find where I put it. Okay, found the uh, the self-adjuster, and I went ahead and cleaned it off and just put some anti-seize down in the threads because you really want this thing to be able to move freely. Now, this is going to sit in between these pads or these shoes and hold constant pressure so and this is your solid pivot and then as the uh, wheel cylinder pushes out it pivots from the top away okay so looking at this it's going to go in this way this spring has to go in where it has enough room to clear the little star wheel if you put it in this way it's going to catch on the star wheel so make sure that you're putting in the spring the right way. So it's gonna go in first like this. Okay, spring's in place. Now close this down as tight as you can get, make it as small as possible. And that is brakes done on a 65 to 69 Corvair. Well, I've been waiting for a few days and finally all of the parts came in that we need to put the front suspension back together. I did spring, as I told you, for all new bolts, hardware, everything, so that when we put the front suspension back together, it is as solid and probably better than new. I also went ahead and picked up all new bushings. I did spring for the rubber ones because um, I've heard there's been some issues with the nylon ones, you know, not flexing enough or whatever. But I did put new rubber bushings in. We've got all new clamps for the, uh, the tie rod ends. We've got new bolts for the uh, adjusters on the lower control arm. We've got all new hardware for the uppers, including new rubbers and new forged um, pivot arms, grade eight hardware, everything. So I think it's time to put the bushings in the front suspension and get this car back on the road. I'm going to start with the lower control arms. Let me get some of the paint out of the, uh, the area where the, the bushing sits and then we'll get this pressed in place. Okay, now all I need to do is just press these into the center of the uh, the little toothed wheel there, and I'll probably just do this in the vise, and then this will be done. The next step is going to be doing the upper control arms, and these are a little bit different because I can't press the bushings in first. We have to slide the uh, the little pivot arm in and then press the bushings onto the uh, the shaft. I can do one of these with the ball joint press, but it would really be best to do it with like a shop press. I don't have one, so we're gonna have to figure out a way to get the second bushing onto the, uh, the shaft here. Okay, what can I do here? I wonder, hang on, be right back. So I've got this ball joint separator. I wonder if I can hook it onto here and put something under here to keep it from just pinching that bushing and then tighten this down and it would push the bushing in. That may be worth trying. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not, but uh, it's the best that I've got at the moment. So we're gonna figure this out. All right, wish me luck. Okay, so it pressed it in some. Hmm. I may just have to hammer this in with, uh, with a hammer and like a, a drift going over the, the bushing itself because I don't want to damage the new bushing. If you're doing this at home, it's really best to do this with like a press so that way you can press it in nice and square. But we're going to use what we've got. So let me go try and hit this in with a hammer and see if we can get the, the bushing to seat. That really wasn't that hard. Um, it just tapped nice and easy in. So if you don't have a press, this is a, a decent option to get the, the bushing in place.
One thing I didn't mention early on is that I wanted to lower the front end of the car a little bit. And there's some different ways that you can do that. Um, I know Clark sells some HD springs. Um, that's not in the budget right now, but what I can do is, since the Corvairs don't really have a ton of weight on the front end, front springs don't really wear all that much. So what I did was I took the, the stock front springs, I cut one coil off of them, and then I just repainted them in a bright red so they at least look pretty. So this is going to lower the front end down, should be about an inch or so. Can always cut more if we need to, just know that every time that you cut the spring, it's gonna make it stiffer. So let's start with one coil. If we have to take it back apart again and cut a little bit more, we can always do that. All right, let's get this car back together. Got our all new rebuilt lower control arm. Um, I need to pull the bushing off here so that we can get it attached to the sway bar at some point, not yet. And we're just putting everything together loose right now because we want to get weight back on the car so that we're not tightening bushings in the down position and putting the, everything in a bind. We'll get it all installed, put weight on the car, bounce it several times, and then tighten everything with weight on the car. So this is all just a loose assemble. All right, everything looks good. All right, next comes the spring. And when we took it apart, we used just an internal spring compressor. I'm gonna try something different this time that I saw, which is to run a long threaded rod through the shock mount hole all the way to the bottom of the control arm and then pull everything together. That way we can have it all tight and then put both the upper control arm on, hang the spindle, and then let pressure off of that threaded rod and everything should be nice and contained. All right. Got my pigtails all lined up. Took a piece of half inch threaded rod and just welded a nut to one side. And then got a piece of just like 3 16 or quarter inch here with a hole in the bottom. And then I've coated the entire bolt here in NICs because I really don't want this thing to gall up while I'm trying to tighten it down. Okay, let's see how this works. This is working well. All right, let's get the new upper control arm bolted on and then we can hang the spindle and then take some pressure off that bolt and move on to the other side. It looks like we've got to tighten this down just a little bit more before we can get the, uh, the knuckle in place. Now these are not tight yet. I still need to, uh, to torque those down, but let's get the, uh, the bolt out holding the, the coil spring in place and then we can show you the new shocks that we've got for the car. For the shocks, I went with some KYB gas adjusts. My hope is that with gas shocks with the original front springs, that this will provide a good quality ride. It's a little stiffer than stock, but it'll also be a good foundation moving forward if I ever did want to upgrade uh, to a different spring. And just like with the rest of the suspension, we're doing all new grade eight hardware, all new rubber bushings everywhere. Now, before this thing gets too side heavy, let's start putting on the other suspension because I don't want it to fall over. Because if you can see, it's starting to lean already. Let's hang the other side on it, get it balanced out. Then we can put the, the strut rods on and get this guy in the car.
And just like that, the front suspension is all put back together. It has been almost three months since the car has been on the road and I can't wait to take it on a test drive. Let's throw the front suspension back in the car. We've got to do some greasing of the ball joints and a few other tiny little things like bleeding the brakes. Then we can put it back on its feet again, tighten all of the suspension bolts, um, try and do just a, a basic alignment on it. We do still need to take it to an alignment shop since a lot has changed. And then we can finally go take this thing for a blast again. Huh, that's not good. So unfortunately, one of the bolts broke holding the front suspension in and I had to take it back out one more time and take the captured nut off. Now fortunately, I was able to get the broken bit out and it actually just kind of unscrewed pretty easily. So I'm not real sure if it was just a weak bolt or, or what happened. I did chase a tap through it and it chased just fine. So. I don't know, let me put this back in and then um, I've got some new bolts and we'll just try bolting in the suspension in again. Okay, take two. Let's see if we can get this thing in without breaking anything this time. Looking at the, uh, the Pittman arm, I really need to clean this thing up, but let me get it back on the road first to get everything aligned because I can always take this off at a later date and get it cleaned up. Okay, first impressions. The uh, the suspension is so much tighter than it used to be. I guess I didn't realize how bad it had gotten and that there's not a bump, clang, rattle, squeak anywhere in the, uh, the front end. It feels nice and solid. It feels planted. The quick wrench of steering arms definitely require a little bit more um, physical input at low speeds, but once you're going, it feels fine. And they definitely make the car a lot quicker to react. So I've still got a lot of work to do on the car. I need to, to wrap up the, the body work on the front end um, and get that in paint so I can get the headlights back in it, get the bumper back on, get turn signals back in it. Also need to get the front end aligned because I just did a, a quick estimation on it and it's going straight down the road, but I don't want to wear out these new tires. Coming up next, I want to start working on some of the, the things that I didn't realize were going to be an issue. Like, I love the sound of the Clark's Ultimate Exhaust, but it doesn't translate well in, in videos, but it drones so bad um, that on the interstate at 60 miles an hour, you can't have a conversation with anyone. You couldn't listen to the radio. So I'm gonna create a new exhaust system. I'm gonna keep the headers if I can, and I'm gonna try and do something that's just a little bit more manageable day to day. I also want to uh, talk a little bit about the National Corvair Museum. There is not currently a permanent National Corvair Museum. Um, they've been renting some space for a while, but they've overgrown that space and are trying to raise some money to develop a permanent location to celebrate the history of the Chevrolet Corvair. If you're interested in donating for the preservation of the Corvair and all of its varieties, I'll put a link in the description about how you can support the National Corvair Museum. It's a really worthwhile endeavor and I strongly encourage everyone to check out their website so that we can keep the uh, the legacy of the, the Chevrolet Corvair alive for generations to come. That's going to wrap up this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. God bless and we will see you soon.